Hitting the record button. All right, today is the 24th of April in the year 2012, and I am interviewing Gene Howell. We're at the Illinois State Library in Springfield. Gene, you are how old? 81. 81. You were, your birthday is? August the 3rd, 1930. 1930, okay. My name is Pat McGuckin. I'm gonna be the interviewer, and our sonographer is Cindy Weibel. Uh, Gene, could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? I was in the uh, Korean War. I was in the Combat Engineers Army. Okay. And your rank? Yes, Sergeant First Class. Okay. And the, the total time of your service was what years? Uh, 51 to 53. Okay. And can you elaborate a little on your job assignment? Well, <laughs> the Combat Engineers, we pretty much moved around all the time, you know. It, I was attached, we was attached to the 21st Infantry of uh, the 24th Division. And the combat engineers, we, well, we did about everything, built roads, they were in minefields, build bridges, you name it, you know, construction really. And, uh, that's pretty much what we did, we was all over the place. And you were injured during your service? No, no you weren't. No, 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 I was not injured, no. Okay. Were there any casualties in your unit or? Not that I knew of. Okay. How many people were in your unit? God, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many people there were. I was, I was a motor sergeant, so I, I don't, I don't know the how many the muster was, how many people there were. Okay, well, walk me through a typical day. What was a what was a typical was there a, was there a typical day, and what would it have been like? The only typical day I can think about is freezing to death. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, okay. So it was cold. How cold? Oh, well, I have no idea what the temperature was, but. I tell you, we had our trucks and stuff. We, uh, our dozers, we couldn't shut them off because if you ever shut them off, you would never get them started again. And our trucks, uh, we uh, we had uh, the new hydromatic trucks, and uh, it was so cold that when you get them started, they wouldn't move. I tell you, you had to let them run to the to the hydromatics. Oh yeah, yeah, it was just just miserable, cold and and dirty, you know, the usual. Well, well, give me, tell me a, a couple, City, you're okay, right? Now? Okay. Tell me a couple of, give me a couple of memorable experiences that happened while you were over there. Can you think anything that comes to mind? Well, yeah. Uh, one of the things that really got to me uh, is we was moving up and here Mo come. Moving up where? We was going up to the front. Okay. And uh, here come these refugees. This is right after I joined the outfit. And the kids, I couldn't get over the kids. Uh, can you imagine a, a seven, eight, nine-year-old kid in the world by itself? Nobody cares. Nobody knows him. And uh, and I was stopped there, and I got out, and I, we stopped along the road, and I had sea rations out, and had chocolate, and they had chocolate in them. And I was there, and, and I don't know where this little guy come from, but he he's probably about seven, eight years old. I don't know, you know. And there he was, standing there looking at me. Well, I couldn't. And I so I give it to him. Oh man, he come down. Don't you ever do that again? He said that kid could drop a grenade in your pocket and blow you to somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, that was the biggest thing over there that hurt me was seeing the poor little kids that nobody cared about. Uh, and you know, we value life. Uh, it seemed to me like they didn't. It didn't seem to bother any of them. You know, uh, you know that was one of the one of my worst things. But uh, I don't know, just uh, the cold weather was one. <laughs> it was so cold, you know. And we didn't really have the best equipment because this was back in 52, you know. We st the fact is, we still had World War II equipment. Our trucks and stuff were old. They were junk and we was trying to keep them running, you know. We'd, in fact, I'd uh, go from different outfits and we'd try to trade parts, keep the trucks and stuff running. Because we run built trucks, we built a lot of roads over there, and then we built the uh, bridges, the new bridges. I don't know whether the Bailey Bridge they call it. And what you did, say you was going to build from here to there, you'd build it back here and you'd shove it out, and then let it drop on the other side. You throw the blocks and uh, planks down, and away you went. <laughs> it was pretty rest. My goodness. Uh, outside that, I I think is just. Well, it was, it was miserable, you know. What was the food like? <laughs> sea rations. 
Which was, which was <laughs> well, what? we were just talking about that a while ago. It seemed like all I ever got was beans and frankfurters. <laughs> and what we do, we would throw them up on the uh, on the manifold of the truck and stuff, and get them hot. So you'd have a hot hot meal. <laughs> and then at night, you bed it down, and uh, you'd get in your your sleeping bags, which we call them fart sack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what do you call them? Fart sacks. Oh, <laughs> And, uh, but then they always told you too, you always make sure you take your socks off. So you want to freeze your feet and put your socks on your arm, keep them dry, then you get them up. And then they come out with what they call, the, we call them the Mickey Mouse boots. It's supposed to self and dry when you walk. That sounds good, except when you stop. <laughs> uh -huh. Then they go, you know, your sweet, uh -huh. that was worse. And then we would, you know, you'd stand beside a truck and try to keep warm. And, but that, that's good, you're not exhausted. That's the worst thing you do, because when you walked away, that moisture. Yeah, it was. I would say my biggest thing over there. Naturally, wanted to come home. <laughs> yeah. well, well, tell me, how did you stay in touch with your family? Pardon? How did you stay in touch with your family? Were you able to well, stay in touch with your family? You know, when I first hit there, I didn't get. I didn't get a letter from home probably for probably over a month, because we were still moving around. You know, and time it caught up with you. And then the other thing is, is what they do. See, I went, you went into Japan, and that's where they assigned you to which outfit you went to in Korea. Where, where, did, where did you fly out of? I didn't fly. Are you, well, they took you by? I rode, I rode five different ships and liked to die on every one of them. Okay, where, where was your port of call in the, in the United States? Where did you first leave from in the United States? I, uh, we went to Stolman, and then we which left out Stol Camp, Camp Stolman, which is in California. Okay. That was the rebel devil. And then you got on a ferry and you rode the ferry up to San Francisco, which was Fort Madison. Then you rode ship over, went to Japan, 14 days getting Japan, and it hit a storm and boy, it was so bad. What yeah. happened? What, tell me, tell me what happened in the storm. Well, what, what happens? You just, my dad was a, a, a sailor in World War One, and he used to talk about waves big, being bigger than ships. You know, I never thought I, that could be, but there is. We've really? seen it. I've seen it because we'd come up, and when you'd come up on these waves, the, 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 the screws would come out of the water. You think she's going to go down? She's going to go down. Oh but then they locked us down because of, of the, the battle, you know. And the smell was just—if you wasn't sick, you would be, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> because you know body odor and the guys, you know, throwing up and, and smoke and, and everything. It was just it was just terrible. Uh, Did they have a medic on board or? No, we didn't have medics, nobody, nothing there. You just went through it. You just went through it. Uh, and I landed in, uh, we landed in Yokohama and they took us up to Drake and we uh, processed and when they signed you the outfit, incidentally, I went through infantry and wound up in the combat engineers. And I never was in the engineer before, <laughs> but that's where, I, that's where I wound up. Uh, but it was, uh, just a terrible, terrible time. I mean, I tell you, I think the biggest thing I appreciate is the good old USA. They'll never get me out of here as long as I live. <laughs> After your service, you've never left the country, or, or no? I would not. And I'll, I'll tell you something else: they're not going to get me on any cruises either. <laughs> what, what, what did you do for entertainment? There wasn't any. Did, did, did any no. celebrities come? And no. I hope. Or well, I tell you what, they did one time. I'll tell you who came over there was uh, uh, Hank Snow and uh, Ernest Tubbs and the Duke of Maduka. I don't know whether you remember that. Country, he, country music? Yeah, or, yeah okay. no, that's the only one thing. What did they do? They put a show on? And yeah, they put a show on for us. It was nice. It was good. Uh, and then one time they brought over uh, uh, Jeff Willard, I think his name, and his old girl band. <laughs> Which was something. <laughs> oh my! I mean, just to see a white woman was. <laughs> mm. did, did you feel? Uh, did you feel pressure? Did you feel stress? Um, was it was it a constant pressure and a constant stress? I don't think. No, I didn't seem like it. I, I tell you, that was one good thing about the engineers, because we was always going and moving, and you know, you kept your mind. And, and you, you didn't, there was always something to do. I mean, you never, uh, that's one thing about the engineers. They always had something for you to do, you know. You had plenty of supplies? Pardon? Did you have plenty of supplies? No, that was one thing that hurt us. 
over there it was uh, like I say uh, getting parts and stuff when we first got there because that was one of the biggest problems getting getting equipment in there. The other thing is we still had all World War One one equipment and it was and it was all junk, you know. <laughs> broke down and tried to keep them running. No, the supplies wasn't all that good. And uh, no, the food wasn't all that good. <laughs> uh, but no, it was, well, I don't know, it is. Mm. You know, that's been 60 years ago. <laughs> were you were you given any medals or citations? No, 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 I was just a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> did, how close did you come to combat at all? I mean, well, we were just behind us, up there, yeah, we was up there, but they, the infantry was in front of yeah. us. That the engineers see, we don't get the CIB. The, What's CIB? A combat infantry badge. Okay. What we they give us was what it was called the combat engineer badge. That was that's okay. that's about it. Uh, which didn't amount to much. I don't even was they even recognize it or not. No, I had never got that. No. Did did they give you leave? What did you do when you were on leave? When I was on leave. <laughs> Well, the only time you ever got to go, you got to go back to Japan for two weeks and go R and R. That was it. What'd you do? Well, the usual. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can't talk about it then, right? Okay. It's better not with her sitting there. Okay. All right. <laughs> back then, we went up, when we first hit there at Yokohama. They was them girls out there dancing, the band's playing, you know. The guy said, man, they don't look like much. The guy said, wait six months, they'll be living dolls. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, so, was, was there anything, can you think of any humorous events? Any? Well, you know, there was always, I don't want to say any trigger thing, but it just seemed like there's always something going on that would make you laugh, you know. I guess you'd call it a nervous laugh, but that, yeah, there'd be something. Did you pull pranks on each other, or? Do what? Did you did you pull pranks on each Not other? Too though? much, no. It's pretty much, pretty much all business, because all of us wanted to go home. Oh, <laughs> that was a big thing. I spent eleven months, nineteen days, and six hours. <laughs> now, now, when you went there, were you married, children? Yes, okay. married. And had two little kids, two okay. little girls. And how often were you able to talk to your? It was I've never talked letters. About was was all no. was just letters, or that's all you got was every get letters from home. Took, like I say, when I first got, it took about six weeks before I got a letter from home. Did you take pictures of your wife and kids with you to kind of remind you? Just carry oh, yeah. what you can carry with you. Yeah. yeah. yeah Did wife. you have any, any good luck charms or something of the sort? Or? <laughs> no. Sack of Christopher Mendels and no, no. Yeah, okay. And in that, no. Not too much. Yeah, that kept you going with your family. I mean, that's what you look for. Get to come home. Did you keep a diary while you were there? I never kept that. No, we just one day at a time. One day at a time. Yes. What What did you think of your officers, your fellow soldiers? Did you get along with everybody? Great, good guys. Uh, I mean, they was couldn't ask for any better. How so? Uh, my uh, My commanding officers have been great, all of them, and the guys uh, uh, were just great. Great bunch of kids, guys. And you know, most of them were uh, draftees and stuff. Were you drafted? No, no, I was. You volunteered. I, I was. In, I joined the National Guard when I was seventeen, okay. and got taken, uh, okay. picked up. Yeah, but there again, I got married when I was too young. I don't know. Maybe you're always too young. I don't know. <laughs> did you Did you make any close friendships? I mean, no, no. That was another thing over there. You, there was always some guys coming and going. See, you got uh, four points of combat. Uh, zone and then you get you get moved you back and they start rotating divisions and you go back and you get a point and a half and it took 36 points to rotate so and there was always guys coming and going all the time you never no you never had a really close contact with anybody uh, I mean what you call it. it's not like you're a unit that goes together because we weren't uh, because there was always guys coming and going and, and so, did, did you benefit from the GI Bill? Yeah, I started to go to Millican on the GI Bill, okay. but I uh, couldn't make ends meet. <laughs> I was trying to work on the railroad when they come back on the switch gauge uh, extra board and got laid off all the time. I'm sorry, I'm a switch? A switchman, yeah. Switchman. On the railroad. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much. 
And so when I went to it, that's when I went to work at Caterpillar, <laughs> which was the greatest thing ever happened to me. They, they're a good company. They took care of me. No, I, not too much. I just, like I say, I just run the mill dog face. <laughs> so, do you remember your final day of service? Pardon? Do you remember the final day you were over there? What was it like? Yeah, I do. I can remember the day I, I left Pusan. And I looked back when that ship was going out, going to I went to Sasebo, Japan, coming through there. I thought, I hope I never see this place again. <laughs> and you know, they do, they take them back and forth. I mean, the Korean people are really good about it. I could have went over there. Some of the guys did go back over there, but I can tell you this, so I saw, uh, you know, they had the Olympics over there. And see a soul, the shape, the, all the buildings, it wasn't that way when I was there. It was pretty, pretty bad. There wasn't even paved roads. The roads were, that was one of the biggest things we did over there was build roads. We hauled rock and made roads for them because roads, uh, you couldn't even get a, 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 hardly a truck down them. It, much, it didn't seem like there's much wider in this day. There's all just cow paths. Now, while you, while you were over there, the president would have been Truman or Eisenhower? Uh, Truman. Okay. Now, there was that controversy between Truman and MacArthur. Yeah, uh, yeah, when he told him, you know, he said, I want to retire. He said, no, I'm going to fire you. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what did you guys think about that when you were over there? I, I don't know. I paid much attention to it, to be honest with you. Really? Okay. We, we just wanted to get it done and get home, you know, <laughs> too much. That's all I want to do is go home. Okay. That's all I look for. So how long did it take you to get home? Oh, it took me a long time. I got to, I got messed up. Uh, when the, I left there when the truce was signed, and uh, they released all the prisoners, and they went. Uh, they got pretty much got the ship. See, back in our day, we didn't fly like they do today. Everything was it wasn't airplanes, and so I had to. I went to Ascom City and and uh, got shipped down to Sasebo. I mean to Pusan. I took a ferry from Sasebo. I mean from Pusan to. Japan. To Sasebo and from Sasebo up to Tokyo or Camp Drake and then shipped out of there. I came into Seattle. It took us, well, it took us 14 days to go over and nine days to come back. My goodness. Yeah, the ocean is unbelievable. I've seen that ocean as flat as that and as pretty as blue you've ever seen. No. And then I've seen it where, like I say, <laughs> that was another thing when it was told about. When you got through a day out, they had abandoned ship drill. So each compartment had to go stand at your uh, lifeboat station. Well, that sounds pretty good. So they had all them guys out there, but here's what you had. You had all them guys thrown up on the front. Oh, the guys in the back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you, so your, your first city on the way back was Seattle. Is that yes, right? I came into Seattle. Came into Seattle. What was your reaction when you saw American soil again? Oh, listen, we, uh, we first saw the lights about 6.30 in the morning at, at uh, Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. And then the ship, you know, that, that was the thing. It was about 6.30, but we didn't dock to about 2.30 that afternoon. Why so long? I don't know. It just took that long to come. It's a long ways up to there, I guess. I don't know. It just took a long time for the ship to get in there. But then they uh, uh, put us in process and, and uh, put us on trains. And I went to, which was, uh, what is it out there now? Carson. It's Fort Carson, but that day was Camp Carson. And that's where I got out of service. And what did you do on your first night on American soil? <laughs> you know, it was on that train, uh, riding a train. It took us three days to ride a train from Seattle to Colorado Springs, which is where Fort I don't know, just a particular death, the greatest sight I ever seen. Just be <laughs> <laughs> do you? Um, do you go to any reunions? I mean, are no, no. Like say, we was never. It was not like the units was, you talk about because it was uh, always moving, different things. Even mm -hmm. officers and everybody rotating home, you know, different times. So you didn't really have that close to. Uh, no, I never went to any reunions. Having having served in in the military, after your service, what was your feeling about? The war in general, about the military, um, did it change you? I mean, no, it didn't change me any. Uh, still, how do you feel about the war in military to this it's day? Something we got to do. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, uh, this is still the greatest place to live in the world. And I, I guess, yeah, I'm on that philosophy. 
I'd rather fight them over there than them fight us over here. Okay. So you came back and you started with Caterpillar right away, or? No, Caterpillar wasn't even there. I started, uh, like I say, when I come home, I started on the railroad and tried to go to Milliken. Okay. And uh, then going to GI, and in fact, that semester break, that's when Caterpillar started hiring out there. In fact, I was the third guy to hire Caterpillar. Third guy? Yeah, I never had to worry about getting laid off again. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. And I put 42 years in there. And what did you do at Caterpillar? About everything. I was in uh, materials and, and uh, I was in maintenance and I was also, I retired out of purchasing. In what year? Uh, 96. 96, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, uh, they're good to me, they're a good company. How so? Well, just what, for an old country boy who's at home getting the money I get, you know, in retirement, I can't believe it. I still think sometimes they're going to catch up with me. Because <laughs> all I ever know was grunt work. <laughs> no, it was. No, it's not too big deal. So, do you, did the uh, did the service affect your relationship with your wife or your kids? Or I mean, did you, did you feel stronger to them when well, you got back? My, my little girls were just babies. Uh, in fact, to tell you the truth, on the, on the 26th of June, they're both the same age. That's how bad it was. <laughs> oh my. So no, uh, yeah, there, there, there's a, it was strange. There's it's not, was something I don't want to really talk about. Okay, all right. Um, I think it's a strain on everybody, you know, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's it's not good. Hmm. So how often do you think about your service? Every day? Oh, no, not like I used to. I mean, when you first come home, you know, I mean, I mean, you, there's a lot of you now. There's a lot of nights I woke up and one blood them in this bed. <laughs> but no, not in too much anymore. And like I say, it's been 60 years ago. Yeah. I'm just, I guess, I'm glad I'm just still here. <laughs> how would I, just to sum up, how would you say that your, your service and your experiences over there affected your life? I think it had a great impact. It, 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 I think it, uh, the thing it made is show you appreciate what you got and how great this country is. And, and it also, I guess you'd say, you build a little more for fellowship with people and try to understand them more. Yeah, it, it's, it was a great experience. Fact is, in my opinion, we ought to do like the Israel people do as our kids. They go to school 12 years, the next two years in the army or the service. Mandatory yeah. service, you're in favor of mandatory we service. We have a whole different outlook. Uh, because to me, uh, one of our biggest problems in America today is one word, discipline. There isn't any. Mm -hmm. You know how everybody does a thing. It's like I seen on TV today. They all about what this generation is. Me. <laughs> That's a, uh, yeah. No, it was a it was a great experience, but uh, I don't know. It's, I'm glad it's over. With. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just no. I, 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 is there anything we didn't discuss that, that you'd like to get on the record? No, uh, the only thing is, that I I was nothing. I, th I think about the guys that didn't come back. That's what gets me, just like I served in the Hunter Guard and stuff. That's them guys, and these guys that uh, lost their legs, and that, them's ones, you know, I was lucky. The good Lord blessed me. I didn't get through it and come home. Nothing outstanding, you know. Just but them's the guys I think about. Guys that didn't make it back. You know, it was a terrible situation. And I, I don't think the American people, especially our young, realize what they have here. This is the greatest country in the world. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm a, I guess what you call a gun hole. When it comes to this country, you know, it's kind of like uh, Merle Haggard says, yeah, you start running this country down, you're getting on my fighting side. <laughs> Well, I noticed you're an honor guard now. What do you, what do, you do with the honor guard? Oh, we uh, we perform uh, military funerals. Mm -hmm. We come over to Butler a lot. Mm -hmm. Fact is, we had two yesterday. Uh, some at one time we'd done about 213 of them, and it's military rites, the regular military rites that you see at Arlington thing. We've had the 21 lunch, lunch salute, you know, the four and the flag. We do it all. Uh, I've been on that since I retired in '96. But that's uh, 
yeah, it's a good thing. There again, it helps somebody out that's, you know, that lost their loved one. But you know, that's, there's no replacement of that. And there's, I don't care what anybody tells you when that happens to you. There's, there's nothing you can really, like how, how can you do? Just try to console them, and, you know. But yeah, it was, the uh, fact is we got to uh, Saturday. And we go everywhere. We've been everywhere just about uh, performing these rites. And it all started out with a few guys. What we do because of that, we had the reason we was a Macon County is because American Legion and the BFW and the DAB, we all banded together. That's why we, we uh, do what we do. And we have, uh, it takes about, uh, 18 guys and perform that with complete with the, the flags and everything and the firing. So you got a seven, 21 gun salute. And then you have all the service flags. Uh, and the service flag we're talking about, like if you in the Army, uh, what, World War II, naturally the colors. And then the Purple Heart, there's a Purple Heart. We have flags for that. And we, that's how we, we do that. Yeah, we come here to Butler a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a great deal. Yeah, that's about, about it. And when the day comes when they have an honor guard service for you, what do you want people to think about Gene Howell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I never even thought too much about that. They'll probably say, I'm glad that SB's going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Well, Gene, it's been a pleasure learning about your service, and thank you for your service to the country. Well, and. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I, I feel like I'm insignificant uh, about men, and there's a, the guys have done so much more than I did. And I, I mean, I was there, but nothing outstanding. Mm -hmm. just I, don't, I don't think most Americans would feel that way. Just put my time in and come home. I was glad I was come home. <laughs> well, we're glad you came home, and we thank you for your service. Yeah. 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 All right, anything else? No, that's it. That's all. All right. All right. Great. Thank you.